Somebody gave us a piano. Woo! Amazing. Isn't God so good? And I love, I love like old school pianos. They are so beautiful. And I really was wanting one for my daughters. Right? And we got one. Somebody gave it to us. And we had to find a way to get this very heavy instrument out of somebody else's house. Find a vehicle that is strong enough to carry this vehicle to our house <laughs> and then find more people to help us to pick it up and put it back into. Yeah. Can you imagine? Right. And when we got it, we were like, yes, this is going to be incredible. We're going to start teaching my kids housework, worship. We sit down and we start playing. And it was so bad. <laughs> and so no one touched it for like a month or two. <laughs> and yeah, we got given this beautiful gift. And I'm like, God, I can't even use this thing because it's so bad. <laughs> like it sounds horrific. So, and then, then I started stressing because uh, piano tuners are pretty expensive. <laughs> and you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, God, you provided the piano. Can you provide the money <laughs> to get this thing tuned? Um, and like, as soon as I prayed that, play, this, uh, I'm going somewhere with the story, just like the wave story. Um, waves to piano. Joshua, where are you going, dude? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> God talks to you in whatever you enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoyment is a doorway for God to talk to you. I enjoy music and I enjoy the ocean. Can you believe it? <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm sitting there like, as I said that prayer, God provide a piano tuner for us, right? Within that week, I had five different numbers of piano tuners. Five, right? And I'm like, okay, now I've got to choose. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? There's the $90 one. There's the very expensive dollar one. There's this friend that said he's got a piano kit and a cell phone tuner. Oh, God. Um, and <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're just going to weigh your options yeah. Anyway, I prayed about it um, and I did a, strate a strategic leadership move and I invited this person in the church to come and tune our piano. And Rachel's like, Joshua, ask how much he charges. I'm like, I don't want to ask that now. It's a little bit awkward. Like, uh. anyway, he came and chewed the piano. <laughs> he started at 9.30 and he ended at 12.30. And for three hours, this man sat there with his tuning instrument and his little prongs. And it was fascinating, guys. And he like mutes all of the strings and plays a chord and he tunes, he tunes it finely. Then once he's done all of, like he has to do it in, like, um, what's the word? Come on. Um, strategies. No. Strategic. Strategically going octave by octave, right? By the time he had tuned the whole thing, everything was out of tune again because the whole metal frame had had shifted so then guess what he has to do he has to start from the beginning and go all that that's why it took him three hours and he gets up and he says joshua you're probably gonna have to do this within the next two weeks because the radicalness of the adjustment and the tuning is going to make it move even more. And because of the seasons, everything's shifting and moving because of the heat. So you're probably going to have to revisit again. Um, and he showed no sign of wanting to do it again, by the way, um, which is totally okay. It was three hours. And by that point, I'm like, thank God, I'm going to play it like this forever. Um, and um, he gets up and he says, I just really want to bless you guys with this. Love you so much. And leaves, right? And I'm standing there. And I'm thinking to myself, like, all of this work for this gift, is it even that valuable? Maybe I should have asked God for an electric piano. You know, you just plug it in and don't have to worry about all of these things. Why was there a value? Why is, why is there a value for me to have a real piano in my home? Why? Like, why? What? And then why does God, like... I didn't go looking for a free piano. I didn't search Facebook market for it. It came to me just from me desiring it, right? And then who knew it was going to be so much work? So much work. 
And I'm like, God, anyway, he left. He didn't even take five steps down the, 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 the pathway, right? And I am sitting at the piano just playing and worshiping God like never before. And then but because there was a value in this piano, there was an investment in this piano. There was something that was tangible about this piano that I just wanted to sit down and play. And then by that point, I realized that it wasn't the piano sound that was bad. Now it was my skill and I needed to improve it. You know what I mean? I can't blame the sound of the honky-tonk piano anymore. <laughs> it's my laziness. <laughs> and, um, and all of a sudden, I had this extreme revelation from Jesus. And Jesus said, Joshua, how are you treating my gift of salvation? <laughs> That's a free gift. How much value do you place in my salvation for your life? I was sobered. Like, oh my word, what have I done with this gift of salvation? <laughs> like, it cost him everything. Right? And then, then by the time it got delivered to me when I was however old, and I received my salvation, <laughs> right? Or <laughs> what did I do with it? Have I just left it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And here's the cool thing. Like the piano, when we got it, it could still produce music. But it just was off by a couple of semitones. It was playing a song, a sound that was not true but it was singable. You could sing along to it. And here's the crazy thing about pianos. I don't know if anyone knows this, but if you practice with an out-of-key piano, out-of-tune piano, you'll train your vocal cords to sing a song that is out of tune. And no matter where you go, you will always be singing out of tune. Isn't that crazy? I've learned that since high school because I, I did music in high school, right? And so I've, I've always had that value. Like, I'm not going to practice with an instrument that is out of tune because I don't want to train my vocal cords to this. And like, then that is another revelation. Like, are we taking our, our revelation and not um, our free gift of salvation? Are we not looking after it, managing it, taking how the, the salvation has affected our lives and actually tweaking it so that we can produce a sound that is true? When a piano tuner comes to tune a piano, they've got something called a tuning fork, right? It plays one, you've heard this, this is so cliche in the Christian world. It takes, it takes one note, just one. It just plays, uh, I'm guessing right now, the middle C. He hits the tuning fork, it hums um, the, the C chord, uh, he puts it to his, his lobe, and he hears the vibration and he tunes middle C to this one tuning fork, one. And then from there, he is able to go his way down and tune it, right? Yes. Thank God for technology. That's all I'm saying now. And um, he, goes, he goes and he tunes it and then he checks it and he goes, <laughs> what is the sound we are producing? Is it tuned? So I've titled this whole thing, um, <laughs> I can't even remember, so let me get it open right now. Um, I've titled this, Being in Tune with the Spirit of God. Being in Tune with the Spirit of God. It, it's a simple analogy. It's a funny story, but I think it's so valuable. Like God gave us this gift. Have we just settled with the sound that we are producing through salvation? Are we... Are we because it's not wrong. It's still, you can still sing a tune to it, right? You can still sing a love song to Jesus and it's acceptable. But are we just settling and not tuning our lives towards the tuning fork? You get what I mean? And what happens is what comes out of us is the sound that is not accurate. It's just slightly off. Does this make sense? And like, then you'll go on and, and it all comes in with familiarity, but then you'll go on in life and you battle with fear of man. Or, or you'll battle with comparison. 
or your battle with depression, or your battle with sickness, or your battle with um, anger and fits of rage, or you battle with all of these things, but instead of allowing yourself to get into the presence of God, allow His anointing to massage your heart so you don't become familiar with the Holy Spirit, and allowing Jesus to come and tune the strings of your heart so that you can sing a song that is accurate and true. And there's something so beautiful about this picture because it takes time. I cannot expect my piano to, <laughs> my free gift that somebody had damaged for a very long time, to arrive at my house. And I can't expect that to sound just like an electric piano. I can't expect that. And that's the thing about salvation. I believe this and I stand by this. I do believe that people will get saved radically. I pray for it every day. But what happens is we create a culture that says, you've got to expect this. And when you get saved, you're going to be perfect. We all know from experience and maturity that this is not the truth. Amen. There is a process, a journey that we've got to go on so that we can tune the strings of our heart to make a sound that pleases the Lord and that sings an accurate song. When I play that piano, I cannot go and turn down the volume. It's like one constant loud sounding piano that I can hear my... <laughs> I'm like going for a walk. I'm like three houses away from my house and I can hear my children going, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, <laughs> on the piano. Like that thing vibrates and just spreads wherever it goes, right? There's no tuning down. And I think in our society, in this day and age, we have gotten so used to the quick fixes. Let's just go and get quick fixed. And guys, I'm not saying I really, re I really believe in a one-time one encounter completely transformed. But I also believe in the other side of things that it's a journey. And we can't be expecting like, oh, the Mac, uh, the Mac Feast Deluxe, <laughs> the, the, the Super Size Me meal. Let me get it right now, right here. When it's actually a process and a journey. It's not the finish line. It's the journey that counts. You know what I'm talking about, right? So there's this, this is kind of what I wanted to talk about. It's not, it's not such a harsh word, but maybe it is.